Good afternoon. Welcome to Open House Edition 17 by DDAG. I am Mugdha. Today, we'll once again be discussing about Rishi Ganga flash floods that happened in February this year in Uttarakhand. We have already talked about this issue in, uh, at DDAG platform uh, during our chat show. And open house edition 16 of July, that is last month. But it was felt that this issue needed more deliberation, more discussion, and that's why today we have organized uh, this uh, panel discussion with experts. On our pan panel of experts today, we have Mr. R. Jessilin, formerly Chairman CWC, Mr. Balrat Joshi, formerly CMD NHPC. Mr. Prabha Dabhas Pandey, formerly Additional Director General, and Mr. N.K. Mathur, formerly Member CWC, who will be initiating the discussion through a brief presentation. I welcome all the experts to this DDAG platform. Dr. Gopal Dhawan, Chairman DDAG, will be the moderator of today's session. And Mr. Yogendra Deva, formerly Director GSI, will be the rapporteur. As I mentioned before, this is a brainstorming session and therefore participation from all the participants is welcome. Uh, this will help in making this uh, session more interactive. I now request Dr. Gopal Dhawan to uh, take over and steer today's session. Thank you. Thank you, Mugda. Good afternoon to all uh, participants and invited speakers. Uh, on behalf of DDAT, I welcome you all. You see, much has been talked about February 2021, Chamoli disaster. And now, it is established that the event was triggered by a rock slow failure which got detached at Rontiga, which is a tributary of Rishi Ganga, and Rishi Ganga is a tributary of Dhali Ganga which finally joins Halakhi. And uh, it, 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 is, it was initiated uh, through a slow failure in this small tributary of Rishi Ganga Rantika. And thereafter, a huge debris flow moved uh, through, the, through the valley of Rishi Ganga. During its journey, it destroyed a small hydroelectric power project, which is named Rishi Ganga. Uh, project and uh, then entered Dhali Ganga River Valley where the Poman project of NTPC was its second victim. I think uh, DDAT was first to draw attention towards significance of this disaster on future of hydropower projects by arranging a chat show within two days of this tragedy. Thereafter, Mr. N.K. Mathur, who is today with us uh, during these discussions, uh, delivered a lecture in our previous open house session in month of July. And today's program is in sequel to the open house lecture delivered by Mr. Mathur. Now, the key questions which, has, which have emerged during these discussions are, what improvement should be done in reservoir rim studies for hydropower projects in Himalayas during the investigation stage itself. Secondly, how to implement effective monitoring program for timely warning to people living in the downstream areas. And finally, should we go for construction of projects where there is a threat of either uh, massive slow failures uh, in the reservoir or the area is infested by a lot of glacier avalanches. We will be looking forward for your suggestions on framing guidelines for the projects located in glacier valleys and uh, we are planning to send our, uh, our suggestions to the government also, so that 
uh, government takes some initiative uh, for uh, uh, future uh, investigations and provides uh, some guidelines to the industry. With these opening remarks, I take this opportunity to invite Shri Anti Mathu, former member of the Water Commission, to give a brief recap of his lecture, which he had delivered on 12th July 2021. Mathu sir, it's your time now. Mathu sir, can you hear me? Mr. Anti Mathu. Uh, Mathu sir, please. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, now, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, I can hear you, sir. Uh, thank you very much for uh, introducing uh, the today's topic. And uh, I will just in a uh, three, four minutes try to recue uh, um, uh, to uh, um, summarize what we had uh, discussed in last uh, lecture. So as we all know that uh, any event that has happened, the first question that comes in our mind is what has happened? So what had happened? The project at Rishi Ganga and uh, this uh, Tapuan were severely damaged. Uh, what was observed at uh, CWC site at Joshimat, the water level rose to 1388 meter. 1388 meter corresponds to approximately 1700 cumex of the discharge. This 12 meter rise happened within 10, uh, 10 to 15 minutes. And after that, the discharge uh, dissipated in two hours. And again in two hours, it, uh, it uh, 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 dissipated completely. So this has happened. How much it has happened? I already told you that uh, 12 meters uh, rise has, uh, had happened and uh, uh, a discharge of 1600 cumex in a month of February, unprecedented, passed through that. And the two projects were uh, severely affected. There was a huge tragedy, human tragedy of people entrapped in that. And uh, uh, we all know those things. But what happened is, there are immediate effects. What are the immediate effects? Damage to the infrastructure, even roads, networks, uh, uh, this uh, uh, communication network, power network, everything fails. Around 400 megawatt of uh, electricity in the grid was cut off. Then the infrastructure economy uh, crisis triggers. Because uh, a project like this uh, goes, uh, the total economy uh, gets affected. And then the blame games start. And all these things happen Im uh, immediately. Immediately, people come out with swords and saying, we didn't project this project, we had to say it etc., etc. Whereas the real reason, as Dhawan Sahib told, it was because of something else and that requires some scientific study that takes some two months uh, study and then we can only know uh, what is the real reason. So once the real reason comes, we must now think what should be done, what we had done wrong and what we should do in future. So uh, in general, projects in the hilly terrain, they already are designed for higher critical sequences, higher critical uh, design loads. Other loadings such as GLOF, Avalanche, Landslide, Cloudburst are also considered. Caution is uh, taken during the construction when we do deep uh, uh, digging in uh, pits and all those things. Then large, uh, uh, these uh, type of things we already do. This uh, adds to the cost of the project. Large projects having economy of scale can absorb these uh, costs. Uh, the projects like Tapuan, they have been designed for GLOF, they have been designed for uh, reservoir rim survey, 
and uh, very intense uh, uh, type of rainfall etc but the problem comes to the uh, projects which are small and medium they are not resilient we cannot uh, design uh, projects like krishi ganga for uh, such uh, heavy loading conditions uh, and they are just sitting duck in front of the enormous natural forces but uh, we cannot abandon those uh, 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 projects in fact small and medium projects in uh, hill uh, hills are otherwise more beneficial and they uh, drive the local economy so what should be done is that we should take safety measures in an integrated approach an individual rishikanga project may not be able to uh, sustain the onslaught of nature but if the integrated approach is uh, uh, applied all projects in the reach big medium and small if they come together and fund the common safety measures and what uh, type of uh, common safety measures forecast of extreme events uh, they should be done for the entire reach and the information should be available to entire uh, all the projects on the line monitoring the integrated watershed catchment river reach basin for any event targeted for all entire uh, reach 24 by 7 through artificial intelligence and uh, anything uh, triggering any uh, abnormal change in uh, the visual whether it is in river or it is in uh, hill mass or anywhere it should immediately be monitored monitor and communicate sudden changes in the flow levels and uh, there should be a protocol for the disaster response so uh, these were my suggestions and we should have uh, extremely nice monitoring systems like uh, landslide monitoring system in um, uh, in konkan railway and such of uh, things can also be done by the such consortium that was my suggestion now i open the field for the discussion which in last uh, lecture could not find much time thank you very much yes sir i think uh, dr dhawan will join shortly there must be some technical problem okay. but uh, i now invite the other uh, panel members i would uh, now like to request uh, mr jay sir mudha i am okay. there i am okay, very sir. much there okay fine sir okay hi there was some some problem yes there was some technical issue okay yes yes please continue so so uh, now i will request uh, jay silan sir to 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 please come in and uh, give her suggestions on this issue please sir you are sir you need to unmute jaisil sir you are muted is it open now yes now it's open sir okay this is the second time of my joining in this group in this type of group for discussions so at the outset i would like to express my appreciation for the way in which uh, ddag is organizing this because not only this india water mission they also have a series of lectures from you know so many experts from everywhere and also now even icid has started on water management so there are various fora in which you know we are bringing in knowledge together so that something better can be done in the future so now when we come to this uh, rishi ganga failure one or two remarks which i couldn't uh, tolerate when it appeared in the news they said that uh, construction of these projects have led to these disasters this is how the public is being you know informed about whereas this event would have happened otherwise also without the projects but in any case now i had thought of uh, my you know remarks in terms of what should be done to you know rehabilitate this project but now that uh, the way we are going it is from investigation and then uh, 
implementation, monitoring, maintenance, construction. So I would like to make a few remarks in that direction. See, we are talking about investigation. The thing that strikes my mind immediately now is the time given for investigation and preparing of preparation of DPS, it's miserably absurd, I would put it. Some states are inviting consultants to prepare a DPR for a project of pump storage in, of 900 megawatt, 1200 megawatt within a period of one year or maximum 18 months. I do not know how much can be achieved if we have an approach of this kind. So first of all, when we talk about investigation, what kind of an investigation relevant to the project and how much reasonable time should be given and how much cost should be involved in that. It is not a question of just preparing a DPR. In fact, I don't want to name a project which has been submitted to CWC and CEA. I have a number of reservations. So if uh, this is the kind of approach we are moving towards, I think there has to be a drastic change in this approach. That will be my first remark if you ask me about investigations. And number two, see this uh, Rishi Ganga floods, it is a unique uh, occurrence. I don't think this kind of a happening has never taken place. We have heard floods, earthquakes, but not this kind of a you know, slope failure and uh, movement of mass, you no know, ice, and it appears even the floor was frozen and the bed level has risen by eight to 10 meters. So there are so many things which are unique to this. This cannot be anticipated, but as uh, we always talk about, you know, one is uh, catchment area treatment. Everyone talks about it. These are there in guidelines. But how do we go about? Later, a clarification was given that it is only the direct draining streams that are to be considered for catchment area treatment. Whereas now we have faced a situation where the catchment overall it is contributing to such an occurrence. So I think as a general thing, we have to the overall And in case we find any susceptible regions, then that should be specifically attended to with monitoring and warning systems. And you see, now we find that there are so many landslides which we have heard of in the recent last 15 days itself, Uttarakhand and Himachal. When such landslides, massive landslides take place, it definitely affects the project. Today, there is a photograph in the paper how the landslide has blocked the river and the upstream buildup of water has damaged so many things. Now, they are anticipating this can fail this artificial, uh, naturally created, you know, uh, this can fail and it can create havoc downstream also. So now this rem reminds us of what happened in Parichu earlier in Satej Basin and also upstream of Kurichu, there was a landslide and how it was handled. So we should have, so if we anticipate what should be done about it, that should be clear and we should have a guideline for that. First of all, examining the catchment potential for any such failures. And if there is any that exists, then how do we go about with that situation in reference to the project we are thinking of? And you see, reservoir instability is also a very important aspect. Unfortunately, you know, it so happened in one of the projects when I visited. They were doing some excavation. The excavated muck was dumped into the reservoir area itself. When I said how this can be allowed, on site, it's a very small project. It is reducing the storage area. And then the contractor said, no, no, if the owner wants, we will remove it. You see that how the casual kind of approach that is being faced now. I think this, this kind of things should be avoided. And then again, there should be an awareness created. See, wherever there is a failure of this kind takes place. See, Mr. Mathur mentioned about blame game. Let us forget about it. That is, somehow it has come into our system. But there should be sufficient awareness. See, like 
some of the major failures even cwc has not come to know in some of the instances when i discussed with them because i was asked to investigate so i mentioned to cwc they said no no we are not aware no one has told us i think there has to be a system for compiling all kinds of failures how it was handled what lessons we have learned from such occurrences i think that is also a need like we have a dam safety directorate in cwc but similarly some part you know should be collecting information on all the failures for example in one andhra project 40 35 meter high concrete dam block it failed it was washed out but it was not known because you know people want to bury whatever happens like this but not taking any effort to learn lessons out of it i think that basic attitude should change so that it can be used for further improvement and i think with these few remarks i think i'll hand it over to others i will come in with few others later thank you thank you thank you jasilan sir uh, for your valuable suggestions uh i think this will uh, this will be in the core of our suggestions which we are uh, planning to jot down and send it to uh, government of india uh well uh, now uh, luckily today we have a person uh, who uh, is a combination of engineering geologist and a seismotectonics uh, scientist uh, i am talking about mr prabhash pandey who was formerly additional director general Uh, of gsi pandey sir you have uh, worked uh, at several himalayan projects and you were the author of uh, seismo tectonic atlas of india so from a geologist point of view because till now i think we have listened to engineers on uh, uh, this aspect i am trying to invoke you as a geologist in this discussion that what is your take uh, as far as geology is concerned for uh, <laughs> projects in himalaya thank you dr dhavan i am trying to restrict myself to geomimical issues i will not step in into the designs because that is thank not my business uh, today we are here to ponder over the positive factors that lead to geomimical catastrophes impacting the human society in a very significant way the aim is uh, to carve out mitigation strategies particularly in the high himalayas as a way forward some of the issues that have often bothered me and for which i try to find solutions on the strength of my limited knowledge base i can list them as follows uh, to what extent the anthropogenic activities are responsible for creating an imbalance in the vast ecosystem of the himalaya leading to various disorders i'll try to give my reasoning a little bit later then is climate change and for that matter global warming in any sense heralding extreme weather conditions this is of utmost concern to all of us then are the ranges of the great himalaya that are still in a state of tectonic flux we know that in himalaya is still rising at the rate of about 5 cm per year and consist of an infirm high relief rugged topography in conjunction with an erratic as well as difficult to predict meteorological and seismic tectonic setup chronic locales of extreme hazards and so should be avoided for any major developmental work including hydropower generation i'll come to this point a little later then how important it is to have a dependable disaster early warning system in place now i put forward my views before this erudite gathering with the hope that uh, some plausible solutions would emerge at the end of the day to address the numerous geomantic environmental problems that plague the inhabitants of the region with great impunity year after year now as far as the first point is concerned regarding the anthropogenic activity i would begin with a, with a few examples of the historical and policing times uh, in september 1893 a lake formed at gona in the birhinga valley a tributary of lakhnanda that measured about 5 kilometers in length 1.6 kilometers in width and 1. Point, uh, and 500 meters in 1, 150 meters in depth 
within a period of six months of its blockade. However, the 1929 survey showed no trace of this huge water body, which is almost equal to the five times the size of this Nanital Lake. Now, except for the leftover of the Titus material. A few years later, 15 kilometers of stream in the same valley, a uh, heavy landslip had fallen into another lake called Gudiyar Tal that remained in existence for many years. Its sudden breach resulted in disastrous floods in the downstream areas right up to Haridwar and complete arbitration of the lake. A series of Holocene blockades are beautifully preserved in the Sangla Valley across Baspa River and yesterday itself, that is on 13th August 2021, a major landslide has blocked the course of Chinab River near Junta, Junda village in Himachal Pradesh, necessitating the evacuation of people from 12 villages. Now, all these examples that I've given do not have any involvement of human activity. So I'll quote the famous PESCO volume of GSI here that mentions that landslides encouraged by high rainfall and large magnitude earthquakes are an inseparable and inevitable part of the still growing Himalaya. Innumerable records exist which show that the failing mountain slopes at times become the cause of permanent or temporary drainage blockades, and the sudden breach gives rise to flash floods. It will therefore be prudent to say that the river valley projects are the victims and not the cause of geohazards. I come to the second point of climate change. A week ago, we have come to know about the UN's intergovernmental panel report on climate change. It states that the global temperatures would rise or exceed 1.5 degrees centigrade over the next 20 years from the present level of 1.1 degrees centigrade. It further mentions that such rise in temperatures would lead to increasing number of heat wave events, longer war and shorter cold seasons, and faster sea level rise. For the Himalaya, such rise in global temperatures would mean enhanced cases of glacial lake bursts, exceptional and erratic precipitation, and great frequency and magnitude of geohazards. Now, what uh, do we conclude from this? That thus in the times to come, extreme weather conditions would be more prevalent and frequent, making the prediction of geoenvironmental hazards, such as landslides, moraine debris flows, avalanches, drainage blockades, lake bursts, flood, flash floods, etc., which affect our hydroelectric projects in much more complex, would be, would be much more complex and intriguing. Then this is the most significant point from the uh, point of view of the <clears throat> hydroelectric project engineers, that planning, execution, and upkeep of river valley projects in the high Himalayas are always fraught with a lot of constraints and uncertainties. Here, the rivers and the tributaries are mostly fed by glaciers, and the catchment comprises barren fractured rock slopes, often covered by snowpacks or fragile and loose colubriums, moraines, or even wind-blown sediments. Our laid-down procedure of investigations for this terrain is perhaps similar to what is done for other congenial environments. Hence, the predictions on aspects of geology, hydrology, slope stability, siltation, etc., cannot be rightly addressed to and therefore liable to remain far from reality. More so, the low budget micro and mini hydro power projects, whose investigations are mostly rudimentary in character, remain totally at the mercy of nature and are always the first to face the brunt of the calamity. So take is, uh, it is therefore time for the regulatory authorities to reframe the, their investigation procedures for power projects located in the upper reaches of the Himalaya and for the power development companies to spend more liberally towards out-of-the-box studies in such regions in the quest for understanding the mood of nature in much greater detail. And I would come to the last point. It goes without saying that if you have to mitigate the impacts of geoenvironmental catastrophes, having the potential of inflicting heavy loss to life and property, you okay. must develop a de dependable monitoring and early warning system. This system has to be multi-parametric, shipped with state-of-the-art instruments and sensors for monitoring the meteorological, hydrological, seismotectonic, and 
cryogenic cryospheric fluctuations on regular and continuous basis. Study of high resolution satellite imagery to observe even the minutest changes in the landscape, power interferometry data for recording ground deformation, a dense global network of seismographs capable of picking up tectonic or gravity induced modifications, as well as flood flows, uh, would compose some of the devices of the system. Besides, there must be a reliable data transmission facility available that would transmit the data from the remote sources to the data processing center. And at the same time, a robust early warning mechanism will have to be created so that the calamitous situations could be timely disseminated to various stakeholders. And I would end with this, that uh, such a system could function meaningfully only if there is wholehearted and long-term involvement of various agencies such as the state and central governments, power development companies, road construction authorities, etc. apart from the academy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pandesab. Thanks for giving <coughs> your valuable inputs to, 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 to deal with such issues in future. Uh, now, I am going to Mr. Balraj Joshi. Joshi sir, uh, for you, I have coined a term all in one of hydropower. You worked for construction of uh, several projects uh, in NHPC. Thereafter, you worked in design. Then you headed NHPC as the chairman and managing director. And you are the one, I think you and uh, Mr. Jesse Lim both visited uh, this uh, Tapovan Vishnu Ghat project of NTPC after the disaster. And I think early, uh, during early days of So you are the best person to tell us, kya kare, aage, aage, aage kya hoga? Project yahan banai ya na banai? Yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Davan. Thank you very much. And uh, for having me here and also uh, the way DDAG has actually taken up this particular subject. Now, when you ask me that uh, we are going to have a chat show like this, I mean, it's only a few days ago. Uh, the question which came to my mind was, why are we talking over Rishi Ganga over and over again? Over and over again. I mean, catastrophes have been happening earlier also, but why are we talking about Rishi Ganga? It's not, of course, the tragic loss of life is there. We know that uh, uh, people's own people died. But still, you know, it, it happens at many other uh, areas also. For, for example, a bus, you know, falls in a car and 40 people get killed. We don't talk about that much. But this particular incident actually has challenged our, our closely held beliefs, probably. That's the reason why we are pining over and over again to discuss this issue. That whether are we uh, doing really what, was, what is required to be done or what have we been doing actually what was required to be done. So that is probably the urge within all of us, the hydro fraternity as well as the geologists and everybody that well, are we doing everything okay? Should we stop going to those areas? We are probably, we are very close to the catastrophe area. I mean, these are the questions which are bothering our minds. Hydro power projects have to become punching bags anyway because you know people don't understand, they people do not uh, really uh, have an insight how, uh, how the hills behave, how the mountains behave. Everybody thinks mountains are immovable permanence and they are standing there like a rock, like a rock, of course, and uh, they will be there forever. And it's only our anthropogenic activities which are actually creating the destabilization in the hills. And our geologist friends know better that they are not basically immovable permanence. Continuously, some kind of stress distribution is taking place within the mountain. It's happening. Landslide have been, have been happening for uh, centuries. Uh, Dr. Pandey just now has stated about Alakanda Valley. There's a record of 150 years available where the Alakanda Valley actually has been uh, generating su such kind of uh, uh, rock slide. And it is very well documented by uh, Mr. Rothela and Pandey. Pandey's 2006 paper is there. The huge list is there, right from 1823 and onwards. So, so hills are certainly uh, readjusting themselves. Now, why this time the noise is more? Because probably the climate change perspective has got mixed with, with the uh, with the slide these slides now we are probably trying to link up that these slides are happening because of climate change i'm not saying no there couldn't be a connection 
but uh, as uh, mr uh, mathur said in the beginning some time kind of scientific study uh, needs to be done for example in this particular episode also uh, even though earlier it was thought it's glob or some climate change has happened that's the reason why flash flood is happening but those signatures have not been found and if the calgary professors reports are to be believed this was certainly a very big uh, rock slide uh, which probably happened because rock was not not able to bear the weight of itself as well as the uh, glacier over this uh, and the fatigue of the rock uh, which which happened because of the continuous loading that has caused this slide to happen and uh, that probably uh, is the is the general consensus now that Uh, this has happened this way only now the general question would be uh, should we stop building projects there now let us face the situation situation is that we have our age old paradigm of development of projects we have all our investigation methodologies cut out nicely but probably these methodologies came into place came into being and percolated in our beliefs at a time when such events were not there they were not documented we have seen it for the first time so therefore an immediate uh, requirement becomes should we actually look at our planning paradigm of these projects and try to introduce some more information or more kind of uh, let's say inputs which are a must which would be a must for planning projects <coughs> in these areas Uh, dr pande has just now said about monitoring and also mr mathur has said that we must have a very good monitoring man- mechanism and there should be an integrated approach to this monitoring mechanism and i think in the last uh, the presentation which he which was made by him very nicely we talked about a central agency doing it actually and who is going to do it and i had suggested that on the lines of national disaster management authority we should have a national disaster prevention authority and then as like you take a uh, approval from cwc or cea for various things or like gsi for various things similarly uh, the projects in this area must also seek a clearance from national disaster prevention authority and this should be an authority which should be vested with all the powers and the budget etc to provide inputs to all and sundry not only small rishiganga type projects or ntpc projects but all and sundry all road projects because this is a disaster let's face it this is a disaster of unimaginable proportions and therefore something bigger needs to be done we are uh, we will be just uh, i mean just come to the hydro part, uh, part of it later but i think initially what i would like to stress here is that we really need a national disaster prevention authority which should have access to isro's uh, detailed uh, you know the, whatever facilities are there continuous monitoring and mous can be drawn on the quarterly basis or whatever the periodicity can be there so i mean as that kind of authority will ultimately clear this project so my first first answer to the question whether should we stop building them there i say no but with these particular procedures and and uh, institutions put in place systematic monitoring and mr mathur has said a very important uh, thing in the beginning that for the design floods of these projects all is being done whatever is required now calling this is the flash flood will, will be probably a misnomer from the hydrological point of view because uh, these projects are designed for spa for pmf i would say that if uh, we have to take some uh, lessons from this event we should invariably design all our structures for pmf and when we say pmf we mean that the probable maximum flood and that has got nothing to do with the glob or anything but the pmf is the worst combination of the parametric uh, meteorological factors that can generate a maximum flood and that probably those factors have been identified the 24 parameters and the maximum values of these parameters will generate that storm so that is well settled uh, only small uh, you know the, the the relaxation was for the barrages that it should be designed for spf i say we can even design that also for pm fine the glof is very nicely taken care of actually glof is studied very properly cwc has a special directorate for it when we go for clearance of that they actually ask you how did you calculate the glob flood how which are the lakes you have taken what are the areas and we have gone as far as in nepal and and into the chinese territory with the lakes are there we have taken information about that from isro so these things are being done actually but the current thing which is which is which has happened basically this is probably we had never imagined we had never thought so that's the reason why we are discussing rishi ganga project today uh, one more prospect which uh, mr mathur i will again corroborate him only because he said that the larger structures are more resilient and in the wake of kishan uh, sorry uh, rishi ganga the event 
if we see what has happened is the river has risen by 13 14 meters for a small structure like a barrage which is of a limited height this 13 meter would mean almost half the dam height so eventually that gets affected all the rating curves which we design which we have for the power house which we have for the spillway the rating curves change because they are actually dependent upon the river morphology and when bus general river morphology has changed and uh, beds have risen so all, all hydrological calculations go here why so in this regard a uh, probably on i mean it, this will seem paradoxical but i would say a larger dam probably would have resisted this uh, this event or would have borne this uh, uh, catastrophe more appropriately and properly. We can certainly have uh, learned lessons from this. For example, uh, Mr. Deva in the beginning said that uh, that added should have been probably higher at a higher level. We should do some kind of sensitivity analysis. Now we know that in Alaknanda, as well as also in the Kali valleys in the 2013 floods, we have seen that the sediment has risen the river bed by about 13 to 14 meters. Let's do a sensitivity analysis by taking 15 meter rise in the river bed. This we were not doing earlier. You know, we never imagined that river bed will rise to these levels. So let that be a planning ingredient now. So I think Dr. Dhawan is very correct that these are the issues which need to be built in our planning paradigm. And therefore, there's absolutely no reason why we should stop building uh, these projects because these projects are the lifeline of those areas and why they are being talked about much is also because these are the only commercial activities going to those hinterlands and uh, developing the you know communities that's the reason why we are getting getting all kind of brunt otherwise who else is going but one more thing is the roads are also being built i yesterday as mr jasin was saying some hills have fallen down him archel in kinor area some slides have occurred and all that is also being blamed on the hydro power but nobody is talking about the road which is being cut haphazardly should we not have a have a proper methodology for the road construction also these are the things which the national disaster prevention authority must look at and uh, with, with that those words uh, i would say that we need to look inwards i will not say that uh, all the people who are making noise are wrong but we need to look inwards improve and rectify our procedures and processes and then emerge victorious thank you very much Thank you, thank you very much, Josh sir. Uh, I have a question for you, but I, being the host, I will give this opportunity to to others first. That let them ask question, and then I will give you my question because you are one person who has seen Dholi Ganga disaster in 2013, uh, where our entire project was almost uh, became okay. non-functional, and you have seen soon after this uh, Rishi Ganga disaster also you have seen. So I'll ask a, a comparison of these two. Uh, after after we have some more questions from the audience so now the session is open to uh, to, to, to to q and a uh, you can send your questions in chat box and you can also raise your hands and in the meanwhile mukta you tell me that whether there are some questions or not i would like to welcome professor ak jain professor ak jain yes. from uh, iit rurki and uh, i am honored that i was his student uh, sir aap kuch kehna chahenge No, no, no. It's perfectly all right. The only problem is that how shall we contemplate such big uh, disasters? In the sense that I, I happen to observe the. Am I audible? I yes, think. yes, yes, very much, sir. I happen. I was witness to 2013 tragedy of Kedarnath because that time I, I was doing the field investigations. Uh, along the Dholi Ganga Valley at Joshimar, uh, in the adjoining Kedarnath Valley, such a thing has happened. So how can we contemplate such such disasters? You know that is the biggest thing, uh, which is in our mind. And this the same thing is for Rishi Ganga. There is a huge rock slide which has happened. Now it is well established that it is a rock slide the paper is in uh, science with about 53 authors the the problem is how how shall we contemplate such a phenomena in such an inaccessible area because most of the of course near the roads the things are accessible in rishi ganga though it was a an area of the of the national A park. Still, it was accessible in the sense that 
that there was a track and things of that kind. But the other values, say for example, if you go further north, there are so many valleys which are inaccessible. I, I don't think that, uh, I, I do not know actually how that becomes a, a practical aspect. And even if it is, if we can monitor it, how can you prevent such? Can somebody give an answer to this? The prevention of such a huge rock slide. Even if it is being identified, how can we prevent it? That is the biggest thing in my mind. <coughs> can we do it? Can we prevent the flooding like Kedarna? And if we can prevent, prevent it, how can we prevent it? That's the biggest thing I have in my mind. Uh, yes, sir. You are, yeah. We are expecting some answers from you. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am putting the goal because such things are natural things, natural disasters. What, what is the prevention? Even if we are able to see that it is coming, say, within few hours, a few days, how can we prevent? Yeah, that's the thing that I want to ask. Okay, okay. So I will go to the panel uh, with this question uh, after a, a short while. Uh, I see two hands raised uh, by Mr. N. K. Mathur and by Mr. No, by Mr. Yogendra Deva. So I will invite Mr. Yogendra Deva uh, first. For his uh, query. Uh, um, uh, uh, pardon me. Uh, Akshay Acharya wants to say something. He has been so please. Uh, if you want to say something, he can invite. Uh, you. I, I, I think he has, he has withdrawn his hand. I can't see his hand anymore. Now, Mr. Acharya, do you want to say something? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks. Uh, Akshay Acharya from SJBNL. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, now, two slides uh, have occurred in Himachal also. I have witnessed this slide, the uh, Nugulsari slide. I think there is a no mechanism to, as uh, Jan said, called no mechanism to predict these type of slides. Uh, we can go for the inventory of the, we can go for the preparation of the inventory of the landslides. As uh, some public sector with the government sector should be involved. Because we are at the site, we know where are the problems. Because independently, GSI comes, they give their report. And similarly, local local project people are not concerned, not uh, talked about this. So I think there is a, some, some uh, combination of these. Uh, all the departments should come together. Wherever the landslide occur, uh, those people should be concerned for this. Then some inventory should be made for the landslides. Uh, prediction is only then possible if we are, if we have inventories. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think Mr. N. K. Mathur has uh, uh, suggested uh, some mechanism of involving all the agencies who are working uh, in the valley because, as he said, that the smaller projects can't take this load. They are the sitting ducks in front of the disaster. But whereas the bigger organizations can certainly. Uh, certainly uh, join together and then uh, uh, come out uh, some kind of strategy to deal with the situation. So thank you, Mr. Acharya, uh, for your uh, inputs. Uh, now uh, I'll go to Mr. Deva. Uh, can you see my presentation? Yes, I can. I can see. Uh, actually, uh, I will just uh, refresh a few things on this happening. And uh, before I go to two, two, two suggestions in this connection, Basically, so this is a very good work done by by uh, Professor Sugar this year only, and it's available at this blog. So this is what he says. This is the Tapovan, Rani, and uh, Ishiganga, and this is the Ronti guy. Ronti, this is the Ronti peak from where this uh, failure has taken place. He has studied the satellite imagery of January 1, 2021, then February 5, that is. The just before the failure and February 10. You can see the failure here. So you can see this is here. This one is developing. This crack is the cracks are developing. 
and this is the one which has paid. And uh, this uh, distance, if you see, this is about 500 meters. But in the next figure, he says that this distance is 550 meters. He says actually this is the block. It is like a wedge, huge block, 550 meter here. And vertically, it is about 500 meter high, 500 meter high. So the inclined length will come to about 800 meters, something like that. So if we see this, he says that there is a 20 meter thick uh, snow and ice cap over this, the glacier ice over this. If we calculate this, so it can generate a flood of up to 4.5 million cubic meter. This is the uh, latest Google Earth image, and this, this is of this month only, I think 10th, uh, 10th of August, something like that. If you see this, same thing, the Powan, Rani here, Rishi Ganga, and this is Ronti Peak, and this is the this is the peak from where this failure has taken place. This, what, is, what is interesting to see is there are lots of uh, failures taking place in this area, but here the river is narrow. There is not much of material here, but if you see the river, it suddenly becomes widened on this side, maybe because of the glacier out here and the material which is coming down, and maybe this is because this material which came down here. This is what I wanted to share with you. I mean, this indicates that what exactly the problem is uh, which is being now, uh, I mean, uh, uh, surmised on the basis of uh, remote sensing that this is the block which has failed here and generated this back. Now, this is the close up of the same thing, the same thing which I was telling you. This is the place, this is the block which has failed, and uh, this is the river. If you see, it is widening here on this side, and this material probably must have uh, uh, blocked this river also. Now, what I, I will just quickly come because time is less. The, uh, what I recommend is uh, the, as a suggestion that the catchment analysis should uh, add another dimension. That should be the geohazard survey, which they will be based on remote sensing. It will be hazard mapping, hazard assessment, hazard monitoring, hazard warning, mitigation, and project planning. All these things should be addressed. But whose baby is it? In this connection, uh, uh, Bagaj Joshi has. Uh, just recommended a wonderful suggestion that uh, this is the national uh, the national disaster prevention authority yes that could be a body which could take care of it otherwise uh, maybe some other government organization and uh, with this i come to the second uh, second important recommendation here that during construction tunnel portals close to hfl at headworks and tailwater end are susceptible to flooding this is what has happened tapon vishnu ghat this is the intake tunnel at the barrage site, and this is where about 30 to 35 workers got trapped because when the floods came, they had they had no escape route for for them to get get out of that. But likewise, anything could have happened in the tail area where uh, the 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 TRT also comes uh, close to HFL, and that is a place where the work goes on, and uh, there are like fill flushing tunnel and other, other uh, uh, TRT map and all these tunnels which are there. So uh, what, what I suggest is that uh, there should be a mandatory addition of escape shafts uh, uh, in, in such uh, components which are close to uh, this HFL and which are susceptible to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deva. Uh, really, your inputs are, uh, are, are really mind-boggling. Oh, very valuable solutions. Uh, Mukta, uh, is there any question in the chat box? I think there's none. No, sir. Can I, oh, can I add one or two remarks if there is no one else asking anything? Actually, sir, I am coming to you with a question. No, sir. No, sir. Yes. We have now five minutes left. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, as soon as possible, we should go with the other program. Okay. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'm going to Jaisilun sir with a question of uh, Professor Jain, where he's saying that even if we 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 have, we we, or we can estimate that something is going to happen, uh, this, uh, disaster is there sitting on our head. Can we do something? So, sir, uh, what is your uh, uh, take on this question of Dr. Jain? So, okay, 
see that comes under hazard assessment see in fact i was a young engineer when i went to laos to work on mekong basin the pamong dam the report you know two volumes of possible hazards potential and assessment and how to manage see they had given so much importance to the hazard potential and management so we have to go with both these and then we have talked now about uh, uh, climate change here Hello. i i have a report from uh, what is that uh, times of india it says implication for india ipcc report glacial retreat cyclones intense heat the picture presented here is of top over vishnugar so linked to climate change and its effect so we have to look at this how do we address <laughs> this and another thing that i find is see these days this is again in the project planning right the report is prepared somebody has to review in one of the cases i found it was given to an academic institute and the outcome was not definitely up to the mark see they are good in their own field somehow it so happens in india the academic side and the practicing engineer side department there is not much of you know may, i know may interchange of experiences so what has happened is in the comments that came there was nothing much and many important aspects had been missed so i feel there has to be a proper intermingling of academic institution and practicing engineers and also i would like to stress the training of engineers because what i find is the young engineers they are not experienced they are only good in software management but not in practical application so because of that i find quite a bit of deficiency which can lead to serious problems later so these are all some points which we have to keep in mind which are lead which can lead to disasters thank you sir thank you very much sir uh, uh joshi sir what is yes. uh, uh, what is your uh, assessment uh, if you compare the 2000 the 13 uh, damage done to our dholiganga project and the damage which uh, tapovan vishnu guard has received uh, uh, can you make some uh, parallels between the two uh, well uh, uh, let me first uh, clarify that this dholiganga you are referring to is a different dholiganga it falls in the kali basin area and uh, there are two dholigangas in fact uh, tapovan vishnu guard also uh, is having one dholiganga so what we are talking of is two different basins actually and uh, but the common commonality in between these two were that the depth of ore burden that was washed and deposited in the river all along was about 13 14 meters in both the cases so this probably tells you some kind of character of the those hills that so so much of uh, you know if you just take it empirically that that uh, kind of material can actually come so my suggestion here was that we should now like mr deva said the tunnel edit should be higher than the hfl but what is hfl is is actually worked out on the established principles already we being followed we must do some kind of sensitivity analysis thinking that if the river rises by 15 meters because so far nobody had seen but now we had seen the river beds can rise by those levels so hfl while working out the hfl for the rivers we should take that sensitivity analysis into picture but i would say as far as the damage was concerned it was almost the same uh, the only difference was in uh, our dholiganga project the dam was quite high and therefore it could sustain whereas in case of tapuban barrage barrage was of a lesser height and it could not uh, really it was not resilient enough to withstand the onslaught of the muck and the slurry which came about and also got submerged also to a much higher depth even though the dholiganga project or nhpc's dholiganga project also suffered major damages but it could be uh, again put on uh, back on rails as only the power house was submerged and some damage of the to the spillway and dam had occurred uh, so i think the lesson from there i would say is that uh, as i said at the beginning probably a larger structure because there are larger forces are coming your way so you must have larger structures the smaller things cannot sustain so that is what i can offer thank you thank you very much josh sir uh, is there any other question or uh, any suggestion in your So would like to sir, make sir sir this is kapil actually whatever yeah mr uh, kapil yeah. please please sir sir, uh, sir just i want to make one point only 
good afternoon to everybody uh, actually this is also my opinion that we should not make the barrages in the higher himalayas particularly where we have very narrow valleys we should make only dams and these should have some more heights also so that will be slightly helpful and this is what has happened in case of our dholiganga project and in the, this tapavan vishnu ward so whatever joshi sir said that we should have the larger structure so i think we should not make the barrages in such area particularly even in 2013 also this uh, jp project uh, this uh, vishnu uh, uh, the uh, the jp project also suffered vishnu priyag vishnu priyag yeah, yeah so i think uh, we should think over these things also that uh, we should make only the dams not the barrages and this run of the river schemes particularly in higher himalayas we should avoid those things okay so this is thank my just one point sir thank you thank you mr kapil mr kapil sir, is head of uh, engineering geology division of nhpc nowadays and uh, a very uh, very uh, important person uh, as far as geophysics is concerned he is a very good geophysicist with us uh, imran uh, can you hear me dr imran said dr imran said Okay, I think he is. Yeah, there. Yes, 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 I am here. Okay, you are there. So, yes. so I would like to, uh, to 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 listen to you also very briefly for a minute or minute and a half. My reaction is that one of the things Joshi Sir has said is that a big structure should be there. The second thing is it may not be possible to raise the level of edits that much. You know, it's not possible that you can make 10-15 meters above ground. और उसकी लेंथ एडिट की ही दो दो किलोमीटर हो जाए नो इट्स नॉट लाइक लाइक दैट इट कैन नॉट बी डन दे आंसर में विच मिस्टर देवा गेव इन हिज ब्रीफ प्रेजेंटेशन द यूज ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग दिस टेक्नोलॉजी इज क्वाइट एडवांस नाउ पीपल आर यूजिंग इट इन मेनी प्लेसेस एंड ए मॉनिटरिंग monitoring strategy should be made uh, that uh, there are groups in various organizations they should be identified and regular monitoring of the vulnerable areas first vulnerable areas may be identified where such blockages may occur even as he was showing the google imagery you know google earth uh, which is available to everybody practically even in that some heading up is seen you know he says the river is narrow and these things should be investigated just not left like that and people can go there and see i believe here also people have gone and uh, uh, this sort of monitoring also is required regular monitoring on a regular basis i think that may also be no, not avoiding disasters but the damages can be minimized at least that should be done well thank you so i think uh, with this so we are very uh, very close to conclude uh, this session uh, and thank you very much uh, to our invited speakers and uh, uh, eminent speakers from the audience who have uh, given their views oh, we will uh, shortly uh, jot down the recommendations based on our discussions uh, i think uh, mr deva has prepared uh this uh, list of conclusions uh actually he was uh, to wrap up this show but due to some urgency and as we are overshooting a little bit so he had to leave and he has given this responsibility to wrap up the session also uh, otherwise my role has ended as a moderate so you see uh the conclusion is that this cat uh, catastrophe was quite a serious catastrophe uh it was because initially everybody thought that this is a glacial uh, avalanche only but uh, with help of remote sensing uh, which particularly uh, this uh, a group of uh, don shogar 
has done from University of uh, uh, Kalergi. Uh, and it was a very big group, group for about, of about 50 people, uh, wherein uh, there were a couple of Indians also. This group has, uh, has really done a wonderful work. And uh, uh, the, the figure shown by uh, Mr. Deva was from their paper. Uh, so uh, now it is established that it was a slow, slow failure, rock slow failure, uh, which was uh, the, the slope was covered by uh, a thick pile of ice of about 20 meter in thickness. So uh, the, the, the reasons are known. Now we have to understand that how to assess them before construction of project. And as Dr. Jain asked that, what to do in case we foresee similar situations can occur during the design life of the uh, project which is laying downstream. Uh, and uh, every, each one of you has also highlighted importance of monitoring also. Uh, so based on all these things, we will draft uh, our our recommendations and share with uh, each one of you through email and uh, after we receive your suggestions we will finalize our draft with these words i once again thank you all for joining us today participating and giving your valuable suggestion thank you very much thank you sir thank you Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And we will look forward Thank for your participation in our future programs. Thanks Thank a lot, sir. sir. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for joining. See you all Thank next you, time. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Dhawan sir. Thank you, Dhawan sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.